Yo, what's up, everybody? How you doing? This is your coach, Renz, and this video is going to be a bit controversial, and some of you may feel offended. I am not making this video to offend you. I am not making this video to steal or take away or diminish your religious beliefs at all. If anything, this video should help you to understand your spirituality a little bit deeper, and if you accept it. But for those who walk the path that I walk, this video is for you. This video is not for someone who has a religion and they want to stick by it, stick by the doctrine, stick by the teaching. I'm not making this video for your argument, for you to debate it in the commentary, because I will not debate it with you in the commentary. This video is purely for people who follow the same line of thinking that I follow. And if you do or do not, that is your prerogative. And I am not trying to push anything on you. This is all about you, do you. I'm happy regardless of if you agree with me or not. And you should be the same way. Regardless if someone agrees with you or not, be happy, walk in it, be it, find your delight in it, and be merry. So before I continue, though, I want to thank everybody who's following the channel, everybody who subscribes to the channel. We want to hit 6,000 subscribers by the end of this year. We're at 5,100. So hit that subscribe button and let's make it happen. All right. But thank you for subscribing. Thank you to all the patrons and thank you for all the members. This video is going to be titled or maybe titled Stop Blaming the Devil and Stop Giving God All the Credit. You're diminishing yourself every time you do it. Every time you do it, you lower your opportunity to become a greater version of yourself. I somewhat mentioned this in my previous video concerning how to be happy. Go back and watch that video of how to be happy and you will get even more of an understanding of what I'm talking about in this video. I am a fan of the hit now Netflix series of Lucifer. It's a brilliant show. It's a show that actually dives into the ideas, the dichotomy of religion and trueness of self than, than, than most other shows. It takes you into a sphere of thinking that most people will never do. Now, here's the thing about it. it the show was canceled off of its parent channel because the religious fanaticism of people who say that you cannot promote the devil. Well, the show wasn't promoting the devil. You cannot change our doctrine of how we perceive the devil. The show wasn't trying to change your doctrine. The show actually took ideas and ideologies of what the devil is from multiple different sources, not just the Christian source, not just the Jewish source, not just the Abrahamic, but it took it from every other culture around. It actually, one of the early episodes gives all the names from multiple cultures of the devil and the perspective of it. But there is a scene in episode three. And if I had the rights, I would literally play it for you, but I do not have those rights. But there is a scene in episode three. And the Lucifer is in a council meeting, a, a counseling session. And in that counseling session, he says something to the effect, I'm not quoting it exactly, that People go around and they blame him. They blame the devil for everything that they do. Every thing that they may find sickening or horrible or demonic, that they blame him. That anything negative that happens in their life, they blame the devil. And he's expounding to the psychologist that he, that is not his thing. He is not sitting on your shoulder telling you to slap the child, to be a pedophile, to rob someone, to rape someone, to murder someone. He's not sitting on your shoulder telling you to do that. He's not sitting on your shoulder telling you to steal. Those things are not what the devil is trying to do. He even says that he's not sitting there trying to cultivate an environment where that is what you decide to do. But yet that as humans you do it purely on your own, but yet find the devil as your scapegoat, the rationale for the devil as your scapegoat. And why? And he's been pun he himself is saying that he's been punished by his father, God, 
uh, to hold up this world role, to be the warden, and that his name will forever go down in history as the one who is creating and doing all this, while all he is doing, and here at this point, because it is vital, that all he is is the warden over a place where humans punish themselves for their guilt and transgressions. I'm going to let that linger for just a second. Think about that. Think about that deeply. So, based on my thinking, my spirituality that I had long before I saw this episode, I came to the realization when I was very young, I'm 48 now, but when I was in my teenage years, that the devil, as Napoleon Hill describes it, is the negative portion of your brain. It's the part of you that desires to blaspheme against your own spirit, that causes you to go and do things that will negatively impact you, negatively impact your family, negatively impact your environment, your culture, your situation. It is that part that pushes you to do that. Now, over time, this idea, this thought has been blamed on outside influences. If you actually go and look at the Jewish literature, which some would just call the Old Testament, the idea of a devil was not present. If you go and read the J text, the D text, or the P text, or the R text, and it's really in the R text, the redacted text, where you really start getting this idea of a Satan, of a being that is this corporal, corporal embodiment, embodiment of the devil, that is where you actually start getting this idea. Uh, un uh, until you start getting uh, the apocalyptic texts of da the book of Daniel, which interestingly enough, uh, the, 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 the actions, the things that ha supposedly happened in the book of Daniel were not written down for three, two to three hundred years after the supposedly events happened. It is during this apocalyptic time frame when this type of writing and the writings of Revelation that you actually start getting this idea in the Jewish literature of a devil. Prior to that, there was none. This tempter, this adversary, if you actually look at it, Lucifer, which is only mentioned twice in the Bible, is the morning star, the, the bringer of light. Uh, when it talked about a king who has fallen as Lucifer, it's talking about someone who has fallen by, based on their ego. And if you accept that as a reference point, it comes from the reading of the book of Enoch. So if the reference point is valid, then why isn't the book of Enoch then also valid? Because the entirety of the idea of a war in heaven and the fallen angels, uh, as far as the Jewish literature com is concerned, comes from the book of Enoch. And if you accept it from the book of Enoch, then you should accept it from the Sumerians and the Epic, Epic of Gilgamesh and the Atrahesis, because this is where those come from as well. So if we're going to be text uh, liter use literature, then let's use all the literature. But the concepts, the idea, the metaphors, the allegory is what I read them for. And in the allegory, the idea of a tempter, of a spirit that dwells inside you, that causes you to do things that are against your betterment, the Satan, which is the adversary that questions whether or not you are as good as you think you are. Because if you recall, this adversary who was up in heaven, after all, so supposedly the adversary was cast down in hell. The Satan was cast in hell and the hell was on earth and the, and heaven, and the evil can't be where God is. This adversary who was up in heaven questioned whether or not Job's affinity for God was based on the fact that he had all these blessings from God and that if they were taken away, he would curse God's name. Challenging the situation is what this adversary did. Now, I found that interesting because in a video that I was watching of Dr. Neil deGrasse, and if I'm saying his name incorrectly, please, I apologize. He was saying how the basically, I'm not going to go through his whole teaching, but the higher the person becomes educated, the less likely they are to believe in these doctrines as literal and only looks at them as allegorical, if looks at them at all. Uh, that once you pass the bachelor's degrees, everything you do beyond that is you challenging what 
you have been conditioned to believe. You see, bachelor's degrees is you learning what is already accepted, the doctrine. Masters, PhDs, and, and, and that level of thinking is you challenging everything that has already been solidified as doctrine and you thinking for yourself and that that number decreases tremendously as you go up the scale of those who have to use critical thinking and research. So when we look at this aspect of the devil, Lucifer, we must recognize that there is no corporal being that is Lucifer. So when I watch the show, I have no problems with his context and with his ideas and his theology. But what we must recognize is that blaming the devil is something that we do in order to escape personal responsibility. We have to come to a level of accepting personal responsibility or we will forever not be able to grow, not be able to increase and develop who we are. Our level of personal development will decrease tremendously because we have decided that someone else is to blame. It is like a society or a group, instead of utilizing the resources that they have in front of them, blaming someone else who put roadblocks in front of them, made it more difficult, and didn't overcome those challenges. Sure, we can recognize that others may have, may impede our progress, but at the end of the day, you spend more money than you make is your fault. You eating unhealthy, you not exercising is your fault. You not taking advantage of every resource that you have by being born into countries that have resources is your fault. You uh, misunderstanding and not having a good perspective on certain things is your fault. The moment you take responsibility for your action, the way your relationships are with your spouse, your family, your husband, your wife, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your children, until you take your own personal responsibility, there cannot be any growth. There cannot be any development. As long as you're pointing the finger and telling others, you have to do this and you have to do that, recognize it goes both ways. Yes, they may need to do certain things to cultivate a better environment for y'all to come into a point of joy, but you also have to do your part. You have to recognize and be open to see where you are also a negative impact, a negative influencer within that same situation. So basically stop blaming the devil, stop blaming other people, look inside yourself and seek more personal development of how you can become better. And when you do that, the road to your greatness then becomes visible. But until then, you walk in a shroud of darkness, not being able to see the light, the light bringer, the morning star, which if you actually looked at it in Revelations, talk about the morning star, which is Venus, and that how the morning star is light, shines bright, but then is overwhelmed by the sun, the rising of the sun. It's astrological. But stop blaming others. Stop looking for any reason to blame someone else because it impedes your growth. Now for the most difficult part of this video, for most people to understand. Giving God all the credit. Many people have been taught, trained, conditioned, and believe that for every great thing that happened in your life, and almost every bad thing as well, that you have to give God all the credit. And many will look at how I'm going to explain this and say I'm just not really understanding it and how they mean it and that God deserves all the credit for everything. If I was a religious person, I would say yes, that's true. You see, a religious person has a, and not to sound offensive, a Geppetto mentality about God. That God is this Geppetto string holder that's making moves in your life, creating things in your life, pushing you in certain directions for you to have a certain life. That he is demonstrating your, your how you should become by maneuvering you, in a sense, without you knowing it, giving you free will, but yet at the same time taking your free will because you are only given certain situations in order for you to grow and develop to where you believe and worship him only so that you can achieve heaven and live in eternity 
in heaven with God. This is a religious concept. Prior to governments taking over religion, taking over spirituality, I should say, people had a more spiritual aspect of it, of personal development, personal growth, understanding that it is through the law of cause and effect and understanding how cause and effect works, which gives you the ability to create life in the way that you desire for it to be. Let me give you an example of how this can be so very, very confusing. There was a day in my life. I knew that I was behind in my child support payments. I knew that if you get so far behind, they will uh, cancel your license, suspend your driver's license. I knew that I was more than likely or possibly in that situation. But yet I chose to drive a car anyway. And one night I was leaving my store and my gut instincts, that part that I tell you guys over and over again, connects you to the universal way, the universal energy. My gut instinct said, don't go your usual right, but go left. I ignored my gut. I went right. I went up to the light, made a left. Police officer pulls up behind me. The light above the license plate, not a tail light, not a headlight, the light above the license plate was out. The police officer pulls me over, runs my license, takes me to jail. I spend seven days in jail. I pay the $3,000 to get out. My license is restored. I go back to work. Now, a couple of things from this situation. After that happened, I was much more aggressive in ensuring that I kept my license up to date, make my payments, get everything squared away. Uh, not that I was perfect at it. Sometimes life happened. You miss a payment here and there. You try to you catch back up. But the person who is religious can go multiple ways on this one. They can one first say, oh, you see that God told you to go left. But the devil made you go right. And because the devil made you go right, you got pulled over, you had this impediment, this process, you spent this money, all these things happened to you, you had to go to court. Look at the negative impact. But another person with another doctrine, another thought process could say that, oh, see, the devil wanted you to go to the left so you can continue to evade this situation, but God made you go right so that you can go through this season to get your mind right so you can get your money right, get your resources right, get your perspective of who's in your life and who shouldn't be in your life right so that you can then move forward in life. So God had to create this situation for you to learn from. And yet there are others who can mix it up a whole nother way. This is why from the same writings, there are 30,000 different variations of Christianity. And I'm not just picking on Christianity. There are thousands of variations of Islam, thousands of variations of Buddhism, of Taoism, of every ism. There are thousands of variations from people who supposedly are reading from the same literature, the same book, worshiping the same God, the same sons of gods. There are thousands of variations. And if we went through history and looked at how a religion is today compared to how it was 100 years ago, then 200 years ago, then 500 years ago, there will be even more variations because whatever your religion is today, if you were to travel back a thousand years, you would think that they were blaspheming and they would think that you were too. You would not be of the same religion. You would not claim the same one. Religion has changed based on culture, based on identity of the people in charge of it. So we have this idea of giving God all the credit. My gut instinct told me to go left. If I had went left and evaded that situation, uh, we don't know what could have happened the day after or even that same day that could have made me realize that I need to, you know, really handle this situation. But and at the same time, avoid the seven days that I spent incarcerated uh, for missing six child support payments. I have no embarrassment nor shame concerning that. And 
I have a private channel that I promised my nephew right now I would not tell people about that I have to grow it organically that on that private channel I'm, I'm doing a video later that explains that if you are riding around in your life with shame, fear, or guilt and the fear of love, if that's in your life, you cannot, cannot consider yourself an alpha. So uh, in this vein, I will give you that piece of information that I, I have no shame, no fear, no guilt. So me telling you that that happened in my life does not bother me. You cannot shame me for it because I have none for myself concerning it. Just as I said as a tidbit about the portion concerning Lucifer, he said that humans spend an eternity punishing themselves for their own guilt. I know that I will not spend an eternity punishing myself for my own guilt because I carry no guilt, nor shame, nor fear. So when I say that you cannot continuously give God all the glory for everything, one, it is too confusing. You give God all the glory for every aspect of your life. You will control and congeal a situation to fit that paradigm, to fit it. And at the same time, what you don't realize that you're doing is that you're taking, your taking away your opportunity to realize that if you were made in the image of God, whatever religion you follow, if you claim that you were made in the image of of your creator that you are a piece a specimen you are to follow that that you have the same you have power that you have power on the of the tongue that you can manifest things if you have this power anytime you give the credit away to someone else you steal your ability to truly grow in that power there is a reason why you could be in a church and these people over here are immensely successful in their marriages, immensely successful in their business, immensely successful in their career, in the raising of their children. Yet you who sit there and read the same thing, listen to the same thing, you are not. Because these people take the personal responsibility of recognizing that what happens great, that they are part of the causal factors of it. And what happens horrible, they are part of the causal factors of it. But you who sit there and blame the devil for everything and give God the glory for everything are the ones who never recognize your part that you play in creating and manifesting in the power that you have. This is why you are still robbing Peter to pay Paul. Because you cannot even have enough confidence in yourself to recognize that you can stop the bleeding of your financial disparity. You can stop the bleeding of your relationship that's being torn apart. You can stop the bleeding of your health that's just sputtering away and spiraling into all kind of manner of disease and unhealthy condition that you have the ability, the power to do so, but yet you can't take it because you're either blaming the devil or you're giving all the credit to God. And if you're doing that, then how can you take advantage of any opportunity that comes your way? Well, you know, maybe one day God will bless me with the time to go exercise. Maybe God will bless me with a gym membership. Maybe God will bless me with this and bless me with that. And then when it does happen, God bless me with this gym membership. The problem when you don't take any responsibility for the great things that happen, you don't cherish it. You don't cherish it. You know how many people at the beginning of 2021 will buy a membership to a gym and hardly ever use it. You know how many people, and I'm not going to use 2020, 2020 been kind of crazy, but how many people have bought it one in 2019 and yet at the end of 2019 they looked exactly the same because they didn't use it, because there was no value in it. When you don't take on a personal connection to your achievement, there's no value in it. You may say that you value it because God brought this to you, but if you are not taking any kind of stand in it, you do not value it. Now, don't get me wrong. I know plenty of people who will give God the glory, but they know themselves that they have to move their feet. This is where they will quote and say things like, faith without works is dead. And they're right. That's not, there's nothing wrong with that. You got to put some work in. A man who doesn't work shouldn't eat. You got to put some work in. They do recognize that aspect of it, which is why those who are of the doctrines, who are religious, are still able to achieve because they recognize that there is the base level for the 60 percent. 
There's a next level for the next 20%, and then there's a next level for the 20% after that. They recognize that there are steps of elevation of the consciousness and of the actions you take that elevates you in higher standing even within the confines of your traditions. But for those who are like me, you recognize that God and the devil exist within you. God and the devil can't do nothing beyond you. That you are the determining factor as to whether greatness happens in your life or horrific things happen in your life. That you manifest all things. That, that the universe is not ruled by a creator who sits there and geppettos everything. But the universe is ruled by a creator who says, here it is. Just as your story in the Garden of Eden in the Hebrew te um, text says, here's the garden. It is yours to manage. Here's the earth. It is your dominion. I give you dominion over all of it. There are aspects of the doctrine that tells you, you have the power. You have dominion. You command things to be or not. That you have power in the tongue because what you speak usually is what you think. What you think should coalesce or coincide with how you feel. And when your thoughts and your emotions are one in unity, then there is nothing you can say that can't be or not be. You are the determining factor. Those who think like I do recognize that if this Ain't no if this business is successful because I put forth the effort, the work, the time, the talent to make it successful. And that if I don't, I can't sit here and pray customers come in, customers come in, customers come in. The place has to be maintained to a certain standard. The advertisement and marketing has to go out to entice people to come in. The referrals have to come there. The management of any negative impacts that happen has to be over, overcome. Otherwise, it won't happen. The budgeting of the finances and the supplies and everything, the management of the employees, all those things have to happen by me. Or then later delegate it to someone else who can handle it as well as I. All those things have to happen in the physical, in the mental, in my spirit, in order for any of it to happen. And do I look for as above, so below? Yes. Do I say that how things work in nature affects how things work here? Yes. So I recognize the duality of all things, the duat of it all. When you recognize that, then you don't function in a situation of, oh, Lord, please let it happen. And then when something great happens, you don't say, see, the Lord just brought all those people in here. No, I say that the, 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 the universal flow of energy of me putting out that energy brought that energy in because the create the creator implemented a system and said go work it just in the same way you go to a McDonald's you go to better yet you go to a Chick-fil-A because I can't stand McDonald's most of the time you go to a Chick-fil-A you don't see the owners of Chick-fil-A managing that Chick-fil-A not the licensee I'm talking about the real owners the craft family they're not in your local Chick-fil-A running it. But what they did was set up a system that others can utilize and follow in order for the production to happen, the result to happen. That is, the, what, that is all that I'm saying. That the creator set up a system for certain results to happen, either negative or positive. How you manage the system will determine whether it's negative or positive. How your perspectives are within the system will determine whether it's negative or positive. So how you relate and how you function determines all of those things. Maintain your religion. Maintain your spirituality. Maintain whatever it is that you do. I am not saying not to. But recognize what it really is. And it is a system that is set up where you will either fail miserably or you can succeed greatly. And the higher you elevate your consciousness, the more you recognize that reaching the highest level of your spiritual being is what will allow for you to truly have what you deserve to have, what has been given to you. This world is filled with abundance, but you have to know how to work the system in order to get it, that universal system that is there. We'll talk about that more deeply in another video. But for now, take this information, make it work for you. If you are offended, 
then maybe you need to look deeper into yourself to see why you are offended. I shall not apologize because it is not for me to do so. But if you take offense to it, why do you? Why would you? I'm just another person. I have no control or command over your life. So take it with a grain of salt. And remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good vibrations, good journey.